let's look at this next example. All right, welcome back, guys. So today we're going to be talking a little bit more about impulse and figuring out doing a little bit of harder problems. So a player bounces a 0.82 kilogram soccer ball off her head, changing the velocity of the ball from 4.8 meters per second in the x direction plus negative 1.3 meters per second in the y direction to 7.2 meters per second in the x direction and 4.7 meters per second in the y direction. If the ball is in contact with the player's head for 0 0.0067 seconds, what is the impulse delivered to the ball? Well, is the magnitude of the force exerted on the ball. So we see this ball comes down like this and then goes up like that. So let's try to see if we can figure this out. So first thing we should do is we should try to figure out what the impulse is in the x direction and the y direction. So we're going to do impulse change of momentum. So the mass of the ball, 0.82, velocity in the x final, which is 7.2, minus 0.82 velocity initial in the x in, in the x direction so that's 4.8 so we can see that we change the course of this ball in the x direction we have a certain impulse 8.2 times 7.2 uh, minus 0.82 times 4.8 uh, it's going to be 55.1 kilograms times meters per second in the y direction, we have impulse in the y direction, we have 0.82, velocity 5 in the y is 4.7, minus impulse, uh, mass, impulse in the, uh, I mean velocity initial in the y, negative 1.3. Um, okay, so let's figure this out. 0.82 times 4.7, 0.82 times negative 1.3, and we should get around 4.2. 4.92. Oh, this looks a little bit small. Maybe I did something wrong up here. Let's see. 0 0.82 times 7.2 minus 0 0.82. Uh, yeah, this should, this is wrong. This is around 1.97. Um, I must have done 82 or something like that. So 1.97 kilograms times meters per second. Kilograms times meters per second. Okay. So now that we found the x and the y, and remember momentum is a vector, we need to find the total. So the total impulse is going to be, what we have is 1.97 in the x direction, and we have 4.92 in the y direction. So this is going to give us the total impulse, impulse 1.97 squared plus 4.92 squared, and we get 5.3 uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so that's the total impulse with the direction if we want to put that. So we'll do inverse tan, opposite. 4.92 divided by 1.97. We get an angle of 68.2 degrees. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, now looking at this, what was the magnitude of the force of the ball exerted on the ball? So part B. So we should know the impulse, impulse, is equal to the force times the time. Impulse we found is 5.3. Force is what we're looking for, and we know the ball was in contact for 0 0.00067 seconds. So let's try to figure out this force. 5.3 divided by 0 0.0067 and get a force of 791 newtons. Okay. All right, let's continue. All right, let's look at this one. A boy who is 2 meters tall shoots a 0.3 kilogram dart out of a blowgun horizontally. The dart lands 8.3 meters away. How fast did the dart leave from the gun, uh, from the blowgun? Uh, what was the impulse that uh, did the dart experience from the person? If the dart took 0 0.07 seconds to exit out of the blowgun while it was being shot out, with what average force did the boy blow into the dart? Okay, so this one's a little tricky. We should know that this is getting swung out with the initial velocity, which we're looking for, for part A, and falls down over here. So it falls down 2 meters, everything like that. So actually, part A is a projectile motion problem. Okay, so we should know the acceleration to x is 0, acceleration to y direction, negative 10 meters per second squared. It's going to be traveling the x direction a distance of 8.3 meters. The initial velocity in the y is 0 because it's getting blown out horizontally. And we know displacement in the y is negative 2 meters because it falls down 2 meters. So now we can figure out what the time is Oops. when we when we try to solve this. So we can figure out the sorry. <laughs> uh, 
so we can figure out time. Okay, so we know displacement of y equals b initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Displacement of y is negative two, v initial y is zero, plus one half, negative 10 t squared, and then we can figure out t. Two five square root. 0.63 seconds. And now we know that this is 0.63, we can find what the velocity is in the x direction, which is the initial velocity. So we can do displacement of x equals vxt plus 1 half axt squared. Displacement of x, it goes 8.3 meters. Velocity in the x, that's what we're looking for, 0.63. This is going to be 0 because we can see acceleration in the x is 0. So then what we get for the velocity 8.3 divided by 0.63, and we get 13.17 meters per second. Okay, so that's the velocity that it gets shot out with at the very beginning. Okay. The part B, what impulse did Dart experience from the person? Well, let's try to look at this one, part B. Uh, impulse. So we should know that impulse is equal to a change in momentum which is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So the dart is initially here at the very beginning, and then it gets shot out over here. So we know the mass of the dart is 0.3, and we know when it gets shot out, it has a velocity of 13.17. At the very beginning, the dart uh, is getting blown out over here, so it has an initial velocity of 0. So now that's how we can figure out what this change in momentum is, 0.3 times 13.17, and we get 3.95 uh, kilograms times meters per second. Okay. Part C now says, if the dart took 0 0.07 seconds to exit out of the blowgun while it was being shot out, with what average force did the boy blow into the dart? So we should know impulse is equal to force times time. Impulse being 3.95, we just figured that out. Force is what we're looking for. And while he's shooting it out, it takes 0 0.07 seconds to exit out of the dart gun. So now we can find the force, 3.95 divided by 0 0.07. We should get around 56.4 newtons. Okay. So a little bit complicated because we have to incorporate uh, projectile motion, but hopefully that made sense to you guys. Uh, moving on. All right, so this one's a little complicated. A person stands under an umbrella during a rain shower. A few minutes later, the raindrops turn to hail. Though the number of drops hitting the umbrella per time and their speed remains the same, is the force required to hold the umbrella in the hail the same, more than, or less than the force required in the rain? So this is a little bit uh, complicated. So we know when it's raining and the raindrops hit the umbrella, they just fall splat, and then that's it. However, we know when it's hailing, when it hits the umbrella, it's going to hit and it's going to bounce up. So all the raindrops, they're going to bounce up like this. And you've probably heard it whenever this hail, it kind of bounces. And that bounce is very important. So we're looking for the force. Well, what we should know is impulse is equal to the change, is equal to force times time, but that's also equal to the change in momentum, mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. And what we should know is that when it bounces, what this does is it, it, there's a key difference. The final velocity in this case would be zero when it hits uh, the umbrella. But in this case, the final velocity when it bounces is it's going to have a certain number. I don't know, like we'll say like five. So because it gives that certain number, like we'll say five, and then we'll say the initial velocity it hits the umbrella with is like, I don't know, negative 10. What that means is the impulse increases. And if the impulse increases, this also means that the force is going to increase. So this is the key thing to know uh, regarding this, is whenever something is bouncing, there's going to be more impulse. And when there's more impulse, there's going to be more force. Okay, So whenever something bounces like that, there's going to be more force, more impulse, Okay, because that impulse increases. Okay, because you're adding and you're not just putting zero over here. I hope that made sense. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, moving on. So find the impulse of the following in the graph. So we should know impulse, again, is equal to force times time. So that being said, if we find the area under the curve for each of this, 
This will give us the impulse. Okay. So for the first one, the area on the curve is going to be one half base times height, base being one, and height being six. And this will give us three. And the reason why we can't just do six times one is because the force is changing. It changes from zero to six. And that's why we're doing one half base times height. For the second part, the force isn't changing. It's a constant six, so it's just going to be uh, the base, which is from one to three, which is two, and the height, which is just six. And since it's not changing, we just do that force times the uh, times the time. Okay, and it's going to give us twelve. Third one again, it's changing the force from six to zero, so one half base being two again, and the height being six. And it's going to be six. Number four, again, another triangle, one half base being two, and the height being negative two. So this is going to give us negative two as the answer. Add all this up, 15, 21, it should be 19 kilograms times meters per second. Okay, moving on. A similar kind of question. A five kilogram object with initial velocity of three meters per second Experiencing the force shown in the graph. What is its velocity at six seconds? Okay, so six seconds is right here. Initial, so it has an initial velocity of three meters per second at the very beginning. So what we want to do is we want to find this area under the curve. I'm going to break this up into two pieces, one and two. So one, we're going to find the area on the curve, one half base, three, height, 30, and this will give us 90, 45. The second one, uh, it's a rectangle, so the base is just 3 to 6, which is 3, the height being 30, and then this is going to give us 90. So we know that the total is 90 plus uh, 45, which is 135 kilograms times meters per second. Okay, so that's important to know. What we should know, again, is impulse is equal to change in momentum, which is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So mass is five. Velocity is what we're velocity final is what we're looking for. Mass uh, and velocity initial is three. It has initial velocity of three. And we know the impulse 135. So let's figure out this final velocity. 135 plus 15, because we bring that to the other side, divide by five, and we get 30 meters per second. All right, let's look at this next example, example number nine. Two groups of canoeists meet in the middle of a lake. After a brief visit, a person canoe one pushes on canoe two with a force of 46 newtons to separate the canoes. If the mass of canoe one and its occupants is 130 kilograms and the mass of canoe two and its occupants is 250 kilograms, find the velocity each canoe moves after 1.2 seconds of pushing. Okay. So what we should know is force times time is equal to the change in momentum. Okay, Impulse is equal to cha oops, change in momentum, which means mv final minus mv initial. So we know there's a, even though this person pushes this one with 46 newtons, we know this one gets pushed back, the same thing, 46 newtons. So we know we're going to look at uh, we'll call this one 1 and 2 first. So we'll look at the first one first. So it experiences a force of, we're going to call that negative 46 times the time. So it's in contact for 1.2 seconds. They're both in contact for the same amount of time because they're both getting pushed for 1.2 seconds. The mass of this canoe is 130. Velocity final is what we're looking for. Mass of uh, this 130. But we know it starts at rest. So they're both at rest at the beginning. They meet in the middle. So that's just zero. So now let's try to figure out what V final is. This is zero. 46 times 1.2 divided by 130. And we get negative 0.42 meters per second. Okay? That's for the first one. For the second one, same thing. This one experiences a force of 46, a time of 1.2. Now this one has a mass of 250, velocity final is what we're looking for, and again velocity initial is zero because it starts at rest. So let's find what this V final is, 46 times 1.2 divided by 250 
and we get 0 0.22 meters per second. Okay. Uh, so that's what we get for the first one. Part B, which do you think will have more momentum? Uh, so it's a little bit hard to say. What we know is this 130 kilogram is moving faster, but this one that has more mass is moving slower. What we end up finding is that they both have the exact same momentum, but opposite directions. Okay, you can calculate if you want, but that's what you find. So find the momentum of each canoe. So this one's going to be 130 times 0.42 or negative 0.42, and you get 54.6. Newton, uh, whoops, kilograms times meters per second. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and this is for part C. C. And the second one, that's one, second one is 250 times 0.22. And we can see we get around 55. Uh, but they should be the same. The only reason they're not is because I rounded differently. So, but they should be the same. Says, and part D says, what was the momentum of both canoes before they pushed off each other and what was the mo total momentum after. So we should know before they pushed off each other, they both weren't moving, so it's zero. And if we added these two together, uh, this would also become zero. Um, if I rounded correctly, they all they both cancel out with each other, so it's zero and zero. Okay? Um, so I guess try doing it without rounding uh, if you guys want to see it more correctly. All right, uh, but that's what we should know. So when they're pushing, uh, they have the same momentum beginning and afterwards. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it for today. Next time we talk, uh, we're going to talk about collisions. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone.